So Miles, Alter Bridge is very generous to uh, loan you to Slash. How's that all working out? It's an insane schedule for me because it's just non it's nonstop. I'll get off one tour and immediately start the next. So um, fortunately, I have a, a wife who's very understanding and supportive and lets me, you know, live my dream 365 days a year. So, how do you keep your voice fresh with all of that touring and singing? You know, that's a good question. Um, it's a pretty boring answer because it really means no fun in terms of, you know, no, no excesses of any kind, no partying or, um, I even have to be careful how much I talk, which is, that's kind of the drag is it's like, I think people think I'm not social, but really it's just the more you use it, you know, it's, it's makes it harder to, to utilize during a, a live performance. What was your reaction when Slash actually came a call in? I was shocked. I was really surprised. I live in this, um, you know, I live far away from, from L.A. I live in a town called Spokane, Washington. Um, um, it's called Spokane, but it's in Washington. And uh, I just got this call one night, and uh, he asked if I'd be interested in, in um, being a part of his solo record. And I was just flattered. I was really, really honored. Can we go back a little bit before that? Uh, I understand that uh, he sent you some music and wanted your input uh, for Velvet Revolver, and uh, you turned it down? Yeah, what, what happened there was, I think this would have been 2002, around the summer of, of 2002, I got, a, I got a phone call, and that was funny because I was sitting, I had just gotten um, the New Spin magazine at the time, and on the cover was, I think, it was something related to GNR and, 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 and that, that whole um, period there in the, in, the, in the late 80s, and I was reading it, and I was like, wow, you know, what a great period in rock and roll. And my phone rings about two hours later, and it's an 818 area code, and I think it's my manager, and it's Slash on the other end of the line. So it was just like, it was just kind of a crazy set of circumstances. And, and um, he sent me uh, some stuff that they'd been working on, and basically what happened is I was just, I'd just come out of a, a five years on Epic Records with, with my uh, band, the Mayfield Four at the time, and I was just kind of disillusioned with the music industry and rock and roll, and, and there's just a lot of things going on. And so I just, uh, I, I bowed out um, of, of you know, any sort of um, audition or anything like that. You know, it was never like they offered the gig to me. It's just like, if you're interested in auditioning. So, um, and that was a hard thing, because as a, as a big fan, um, you know, how many times are you going to get that phone call? Well, <laughs> seven years later, the phone rings again. So I've been very lucky. Um, people are like, well, why didn't you, you know, why are you doing it now? Well, I think as, as time went on and, and I discovered that I, music is oxygen for me. I'm miserable without it. So I'm, I'm happy to have a second chance. Speaking of opportunities and phones ringing and things, you had another phone call from uh, Jimmy Page, John Paul Jones, and Jason Bonham. What happened there? What happened there was, um, yeah, that was crazy, um, in a good way. Um, they were considering putting a project together. Um, it, was, it wasn't too long after they'd, they'd uh, done the, the reunion, and I think they really had a good time and, and really just wanted to play again. And so um, Jason actually contacted me and asked if I, if I wanted to um, come over and, and to, to London and, and, and jam for, for um, <laughs> which, which was just still even just uttering the words, you know. Um, it seems pretty surreal and crazy, but yeah, it was it was great. Um, not, nothing ever came of it. I, I think they, um, for for whatever reason, um, they never decided to, to follow through with it. But it wasn't you saying no thanks. Oh, absolutely no, definitely not. <laughs> <laughs> Were you at all nervous? Yeah, probably. Probably had a little bit of adrenaline running, you know. Um, <clears throat> I think more that tends to happen more when you actually get in the environment with them, you know, because um, if it's an artist that you respect or admire, then with that comes a little bit of nerves. Did you have a chance to meet any of the other singers who appeared on Slash's album? I did. I did. That's been great. Um, met Fergie. Um, she's. I, I heard that track. I heard "Beautiful Dangerous" and was pretty blown away because she, I think she proves what a great rock singer she is. Um, you know, people know her from the, the Black Eyed Peas and that um, genre, 
but uh, you discover when you listen to that song that she's a she's a rocker. She's got it in her, and so she's performed with us a couple times, and it's been uh, it's been very impressive um, as a, as a singer and as a performer. Just 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 watching her. Um, the other the other person that uh, has has come and performed with us a few times is, is Lemmy from Motorhead, which as a big Motorhead fan, that's been awesome. Um, he's a, he's a very, very bright and intelligent, um, and talented icon. And there's a reason why so many of us look up to him because he's, he's like the godfather, you know. How much did he make you drink? <laughs> um, the first time, nothing. But I actually ran into him uh, about a month ago. We were playing Nova Rock in, in Austria, and he was there, and we, st we started talking, and it was a great conversation, a great time. And, and um, he offered me a, a, a Jack and Coke. And, I, and the, the singer of me, the you know, teetotaling, on the road, no fun guy, at first was like, and then I was like, wait a minute. I'm sitting here with with Lemmy. How many times is this going to happen? So, so <laughs> they pour me a drink, and I'm, I drink about five sips, and I'm already like feeling. I'm like, I I better calm down here. And so I, you know, we left, say goodbye, and I actually saved the cup. I I put the cup in my bunk and saved it for the rest of the tour. <laughs> what is it like to sing so many songs that were written by so many different people who have such different styles? That's. It's really challenging. It's probably one of the most challenging things I've ever had to attempt to do as a singer because um, he obviously he had so many incredible singers with different approaches to what they do. And so to try and do those songs justice, um, it's just, I, I can't take it lightly. I can't, it's, it's, not, it's not something where I can just listen to the song once or twice and just go out there and, and half-ass it. I mean, I really have to spend some time with, with each one and, and try and uh, do the best that I can at making it so that I'm not just copying what they're doing, but at, you know, keeping a little bit of me in there as well. And it goes for all of the, the material, not just the songs on, on the, 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 um, the solo record, but the Velvet Revolver, the Snake Pit, and the Guns N' Roses material. So it's a real... It's, it's been a real learning experience. It's helped me grow, I think, as, as, as a singer. So I'm grateful for that. And I've got to ask, what is the hardest song to sing? Probably, but that's a good question. Um, hmm, there's so many that are so hard. Rocket Queen's not easy. That's a, ch that's a challenging one. I love it. That's, that's always been one of my favorite GNR songs. Um, we tried Beautiful Dangerous initially in the regular key that it was in, where Fergie sang it. Um, that was that was just not going to happen. My, I had to wear such tight underpants to try and pull that off, so we had to lower it a half step. Uh, what's the what's the uh, song that you get most pleasure from singing, um, either just generally well, obviously with relation to the Slash tour? I really love. I don't even sing, that's probably the song I sing the least of because I just turn it over to the crowd a lot of the time. I love when Slash kicks into the beginning of, of um, Sweet Child of mine. I love to just stand, I usually am just walking out because he does a, a solo prior to that and, I, and I'm just kind of waiting and watching because the minute he hits the first few notes, the crowd just, the, the look on their face for me is just priceless. It's, it's beautiful. It's beautiful to see what that song does to people and what it means to people and that's the best part about this whole thing is is you you realize night after night just how powerful music is in people's lives and and that song really um, I think uh, illustrates that better than than uh, not better but in in a very special way um, to, to everybody in the, in the in the audience this is a big homecoming gig for the people of Stoke, and I imagine for Slash as well. Is Slash doing anything different in his preparations? What what are his preparations for this gig? He doesn't really. He he just he's he's so just kind of easy going, and and uh, um, I think he's just going into it with confidence. You know, I think he's just he's. I don't think he's going to overthink it. I think he's. Of course, he could be just that could be his game face, and he could have us all fooled, but. Um, um, I 
think he's he's uh, I, I know he's excited about it. I'm sure he's looking forward to playing for his for his uh, hometown. Tell me a bit what Slash is like off stage. The fans would like to know what happens when the curtain comes down and the lights go off. You know, what's he like? He's he's very he's very even keel. He's 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 not. Uh, I don't know how to how to put it. It's it's very. Uh, I, admire, I admire just the this, the constant, just very very level headed, and um, very just very cool. You know, very cool and calm. And I th for me, I I like hanging around people like that because it, it rubs off on me and makes me feel, you know, calm and collected. Um, he's 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 also very, like Lemmy, very a very intelligent. A man, a very um, he reads a lot. He's always got got a book. He's always turning me on to n new books that he's reading, um, which I which I like. So um, yeah, he's he's quite an exceptional exceptional person. And now, how does yours and Slash's relationship go forward? We are working on a on a record um, that uh, we're hoping to release next year, and and and. 2012 uh, looks to be the, the year where we'll we'll focus solely on on this, and um, it's exciting. We it's because I'm gone uh, so much of the time. We basically trade fo music files. Thank goodness for the internet and technology. Um, that's how we've done a lot of the, the writing, um, and uh, we're hoping to get in. I think later this year and and record early next year and actually get it to put to tape or hard drive, whatever. And I understand that you're working on a solo album. Yeah, well the, the strange thing is is I was actually just getting ready to, to um, record it when he called a few years ago. And so I went down and, and um, did Starlight at that point and then went back and f basically finished all the music and it's all recorded, I just have to finish the vocals. And now the million dollar question is, is just when I'm going to have a window of time to to release it, um, that's been um, a bit of a task with with everything going on right now. Is it uh, more of a uh, an Alter Bridge kind of hard edged sound, or is it a no. little bit more like Slash? No, it's ne it's 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 neither. Um, it's something that I've been chipping away at for a long time. I, I have a real love for singer songwriter based um songs so a lot of a lot of the uh, material that i knew would have no home in alter bridge and uh now with, with slash um i set aside for that and it's um, um it'll be interesting to see how that's received because it's definitely it's definitely different uh, but it's just some as as the the little artist in me needed to get off i needed to get it off my chest and get it documented